Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Abandoned more than a year after being freed from prison on the basis that he remained incarcerated for 50 years without a trial, 72-year-old George Williams is living in squalid conditions. His niece, Pamela Green, is not pleased and is insisting that he should be compensated by the state because the legal system sold five decades of his life and has literally abandoned him. Since George Williams was released a year now, from the 24th of June 2020, he hasn't received any form of compensation. Sometimes, it's not enough, but we as a family try to do what we can. We cannot do everything, but we try our best, and we haven't heard anything from the government, nothing at all, Green stated. He's staying in Linstead, St. Catherine, that was the old house from those days until now. The floor is falling, the ceiling is falling, it's an outside toilet. We are living in a better age now, and we need something to be done so that he can be more comfortable. It is rough, and then the living facility is a deplorable condition. He needs proper housing, she added. Explaining that taking care of her uncle hasn't been easy, the mother of four stated, I'm me take care of him, take him to the clinic. Me and my other uncle, we are basically his parents. It's very ticklish at times because you know he is in a different world now and he is accustomed to a different lifestyle, so sometimes it's very hard because things that he would ask for we cannot find it to give to him at the same time. William's case was brought up for a review following national outcry over the death of 81-year-old Noel Chambers, who had been in custody for 40 years without trial. Both men were among several mentally ill men identified in an independent commission of investigations report who had each spent at least 40 years in prison awaiting trial. The police reported that he had been arrested and charged with the murder of a man in July 1970 but was subsequently declared unfit to plea as he was at the time diagnosed with schizophrenia. Green strongly believed that her uncle had not been locked up for so long he would have contributed something positive to Jamaica. He could be the Prime Minister or the Governor General or something now. He lost all his life in prison, she said. I heard that the first time that when he went to court he was unfit to plea which in his situation, he shouldn't be sent to prison. He should have been sent to a psychiatrist. He shouldn't be locked up in an institution where they didn't find him guilty for a crime, so you have to lock him away for 50 years for nothing, she said, fuming. Adding that, Williams regularly gets his checkup at Spanish Town Health Center. Green, who operates a bar, said he is up and running, and he's sensible more than even me. Because things that I need to know, most of the times, I him may ask and him remind me. She lamented that his mother, who fought hard to get him released, didn't get to see him before she died in 2006. His mother died, his father died, his mother was his right hand when he was in jail. His mother grew me, his mother is my grandmother, and growing up as a little girl, it was always about George Williams that she talked. So, even if she was alive and met you, she would have started to tell you about George Williams, Green added, noting that, his mother would visit him at least three times a month, she further stated. I can remember my grandmother went through every organization seeking help for the release of her son and nothing never happened. Nurses seek out affecting hospitals in southern region. Healthcare service at four hospitals in Clarendon, Manchester and St. Elizabeth are at risk of being scaled down as scores of nurses in the southern region have reportedly called in sick. The nurses are advocating for several issues to be addressed, including that structured measures should be introduced to guarantee care if they contract COVID-19. Regional Technical Director at the Southern Regional Health Authority, Michael Bennett, reported a breakdown of the numbers of nurses that turn up for work on the 7 a.m. shift. At Mandeville Regional Hospital, 38 of the 91 nurses scheduled for the shift turned up. At Percy Junior Hospital, 24 of 35 nurses scheduled for the shift turned up. At Maypen Hospital, 34 of 36 nurses scheduled for the shift turned up. At Lionel Town Hospital, all 19 nurses scheduled for the shift turned up. Health officials say COVID exposure possibly led to CRH nurses calling in sick. Clinical coordinator for the Western Regional Health Authority, Dr. Delroy Free, is questioning whether there is a link between 27 nurses being exposed to COVID-19 at the Conroe Regional Hospital on Monday and 33 of them calling in sick on Wednesday. There have been reports in other parishes of nurses being off the job. 
The nurses at Cornwall are very responsible. I don't think at this time in this pandemic, they would go to any industrial action, Free reported. Some nurses were exposed to COVID and were in quarantine. I don't know if that is related to that. I don't have the details about why they are not at work, but I suspect that is what it is. Up to Monday, between 80 and 90 people, either confirmed or suspected of having the deadly virus, were admitted to the hospital's 32-bed COVID-19 ward. Virus deaths stalk Western Jamaica. COVID-19 left a trail of death in the part of Western Jamaica last weekend, taking with it a high school teacher. The toll in Montego Bay included Mount Alverna High School accounts teacher Keisha White. Still in shock and disbelief, Mount Alverna principal Kayon Wayne said at the 11th grade instructor, who taught principles of business with one of the school's greatest assets and an excellent accounts teacher. Keisha was very diligent, very involved, always giving her time and service, not just academically, but extracurricular activities. Frequently, out with the athletes, even at champs, stated the principal. He also described White, who passed on Sunday, as humble and pleasant. White, a past student of Mount Alvernia High, has been caring for her young sibling since the passing of their mother. The academic staff was inconsolable on Sunday, with many of them lauding their former colleague for her commitment to education. Residents flee deadly Maxfield violence. Several residents of Bentley Lane of Maxfield Avenue in Kingston have packed their bags as a mini exodus spiral follows the murder of two people, including a woman on Sunday. The first of three no movement days offered no deterrent as gangsters pounced upon 56 year old Paula Raphael on Unity Lane and shot her to death about 11.15 a.m. Paula, a shopkeeper, was sweeping her yard when she was killed, reporters understand. The gunman reportedly escaped on foot. This killing followed the brutal murder of 51-year-old Courtney Kelly and injured to three other members of his household at 2.30 a.m. They live at home on Bentley Lane. Gunmen gained access through a window and fired on the family as they slept. Three members of the family have been hospitalized with one critical. It is unclear whether the incidents are linked. That stretch of Maxfield Avenue, as well as the nearby Rostone community, has been tense for weeks amid several shootings and murders. A resident said that nobody is safe. The war them are fighting are normal because women are dead, men are dead, and don't be surprised if it reach the pitney them, cause them youth are no, no have no love in them. The resident who asked not to be identified has stated, we kill young or elderly. Every minute people are moved out, soon beer empty house left over there. Raphael is the second woman to be killed in the area this month. Tashana, 31, was slain on August 4. Tashana, who is from Denanton address, was traveling in a taxi when gunmen opened fire, killing her. Tashana was reportedly targeted because of a family member with whom she was traveling. Investigations into both Sunday killings are ongoing. Up to August 17, the Kingston Western Police Division has recorded a 23% increase in murders year on year. Shooting has been increased by 34%. The division recorded 80 murders and 78 shootings up to August 17. Brace for adverse weather conditions met service. Jamaicans are being advised to brace for adverse weather conditions beginning late Wednesday as a strong tropical wave moves across the central Caribbean. The tropical wave is expected to move across the island today afterwards it is projected to develop into a broad era of low pressure southwest of Jamaica on Thursday. This system is expected to linger across the Western Caribbean through to early Saturday, and adverse weather associated with it is expected to affect the island beginning late tonight and lasting through to Friday afternoon, the Met Service of Jamaica reported. During the period, expect an increase in showers, thunderstorms, and strong gusty wind, the Met Office of Jamaica advised. Jamaica records 367 new COVID cases, 14 more deaths. Jamaica recorded 367 new COVID-19 cases and 14 deaths on Tuesday, bringing the infection total to 63,831 and virus death total to 1,431. The Ministry of Health and Wellness reported that the new cases comprised of 220 females and 147 males with ages ranging from 18 days to 99 years. 
The cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew 80, Westmoreland 75, St. James 64, St. Catherine and Trelawney 28 each, Hanover 25, St. Mary 21, Manchester 15, St. Anne 13, St. Elizabeth and St. Thomas 6 each, Portland 4 and Clarendon 2. The latest deceased comprised of an 82-year-old male from Clarendon, a 73-year-old female from Clarendon, an 85-year-old female from St. James, a 72-year-old female from St. James, a 72-year-old female from St. James, a 69-year-old female from St. James, a 69-year-old female from St. Anne, a 65-year-old female from St. Anne, an 82-year-old male from Portland, a 57-year-old female from St. Catherine, an 86-year-old female from Westmoreland, a 69-year-old male from Westmoreland, a 67-year-old female from Westmoreland, and an 80-year-old female from Westmoreland. Jamaica has 14,128 active cases after 33 people recovered from the virus, bringing the total number of recoveries to 47,876. Currently, 664 people are hospitalized, 91 of which are severely ill, while 61 are critically ill and 193 are moderately ill. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.